Next Chapter Podcasts. Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the roaring 20s. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device or play on PC through Facebook games. This podcast is sponsored by Ramp. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. With Ramp, you get full visibility into your company's spending and control who spends what with each vendor. Ramp software collects and verifies receipts instantly to save your team valuable time. Ramp automates data entry and routine tasks with automated approvals, expense categorization and bill payments, time-consuming tasks, which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. Get $250 when you join Ramp for free. Just go to ramp.com slash easy. Ramp.com slash easy. R-A-M-P dot com slash easy. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Join Play On Premium to get merch like t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs, ad-free episodes, and bonus content video featuring interviews with the actors, producers, playwrights, and directors who brought it all to life. Go to ncpodcasts.com and subscribe to Play On Premium to support the art and the artists. Next Chapter Podcast presents the Play On Podcast series, As You Like It. Episode 2, Spotted Folds. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. And remember, all the world's a stage. Why, cousin? Why, Rosalind? Cupid, have mercy, not a word? Not one to throw at a dog. No, your words are too precious to be thrown away on puppy dogs. Throw some my way. Come on, crush me with reasons. Then there were two of us laid up, Celia, when one on crutches and the other gone mad without so much as a crutch. Ugh, is this all for your father? Nope. Some of it is for my child's father. Ah! How thorny is this working day world? (laughs) No thorns. Burrs, cousin, thrown at you as a jest. These burrs are in my heart. Ahem them away. I would if I could ahem and a have a him. Come. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Wrestle with your affections. They're not on my side, but his. <laughs> A good wish to wrestle him and fall. But, <laughs> but truly, turning wit aside, to talk in earnest. Is it possible so suddenly you should fall into falling for old Sir Roland's youngest son? The Duke, my dad, loved his father dearly. So it follows that you should love his son dearly? Logically, then, I should hate him, for my father hates his dad dearly, yet I hate not Orlando. No, Faith, don't hate him, for my sake. (laughs) Why not? Doesn't he deserve to be? Uh, Yes. Let me love him still, and you love him too, because I do. No, back off. I don't want a fucking table. Look, here comes your dad. (sighs) Angry dad. Mistress, depart you now with safest speed. You, from our court, must go. What? Me, uncle. You, niece. Within the next ten days, if your presence found so near our public court as twenty miles, you die for it. Dad! <gasps> what? I, I do entreat your grace. Let me know the fault to take now with me. If I have knowledge of my own thoughts, my own desires, and am now awake and not in dream or crazy, which I'm not and trust I'm not, then 
dear uncle, I've never so much as thought an unborn word to offend your highness. Just so. If traitors so could purge their guilt by saying so, why then they are as innocent as grace. Not so. Enough. I have no trust in you. Yet your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Tell me why and where your mistrust lies. You are your father's daughter, that's enough. <gasps> so was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Treason is not inherited, my lord. Or if we did derive it from our friends, what's its use to me? My father was no traitor. <laughs> so, good uncle, don't misconstrue me so to think my poverty is treacherous. Father Sovereign, I'll speak. Yes, Celia. We kept her here for you. Or she'd been banished with her traitor dad. I had never, ever begged for her staying. You stayed her out of sorrow and remorse. I was too young then to value her so, but now I know her. If she's a traitor, then so am I. We have always slept together, waked the same moment, learned, played, eaten, and where we went? Like forevered penguins. Still we went together and inseparable. She is too duplicitous for thee. Smooth. Her very silence and her patience speak to the people and they pity her. You are a fool. She rips you of your you, and you will illuminate your virtue more when she is gone. But no! Do not open to speak. Firm and irrevocable is my doom, which I have now decreed. She is banished. Plant that sentence then on me, master. I cannot live out of her company. You're a fool. You, niece, pack and brace. If you stay long, upon my honor, and in the power of my word, you die. Oh, oh. oh God. My Rosalind, where will you go? Will you, Father, change with me? I'll give. Please, I beg, hurt less than me. I have more reason. You have not, cousin. Please now be lifted. You do know the Duke has banished me, his daughter. No, he has not. No? He hasn't? You lack, then, that ligament that connects us, me as one to you. Shall we be sundered? Shall we apart, sweet girl? No! Let my father seek another heir. So, then, think with me how to together part where to go, and what to take with us. And do not seek to take your sadness to own it alone, and leave me from it. For by holy God, now with unflushed cheek, try as you might, I'm with you. Where shall we go? <gasps> to find my uncle in the forest of Arden. Oh. But the danger it could be to us, young as we are, to travel forth alone. Beauty lures thieves sooner than money. Well, I'll disguise myself in shabby sack, and with our home mound earth dirt my face, so will you. <laughs> and we will walk along and never arouse a man. <laughs> oh, wait! <laughs> Even better. Because I am so blessed cursed with this height, should I suit me suiting like a man? <laughs> An open carry boasting on my thigh, a bowie knife in my hand, and in my heart lies there hid some woman's fear, if any. <clears throat> we will have a tea-topped, mustached outside as many manly man-cowards have that do pose past it with their vibe. <laughs> Does this man have a name? <laughs> <laughs> no worse a name than Hefner's own page, and so... Yes, call me John. Johnny Seed. <laughs> but what's yours to be? Uh, something close to the state of me. Uh, not Celia, but Anne Emma Grant. Oh, <gasps> wait, cousin. What if we managed to steal the wackadoo clown out of your father's court? Oh. Wouldn't he comfort our cousin travel? Oh, oh, I, oh, oh uh, he will go <laughs> over and around the globe with me. Uh, leave me alone to win him. Let's away to pack our jewels and wealth together. Devise the best and safest way to hide us from those who will no doubt seek after I flee. Oh. 
Let us. Let us with peace. Eat liberty and not banishment. My co-mates and brothers in exile, doesn't what we used to know make this life sweeter than that ordered, painted pomp? Aren't these woods more free from fear than the envious court? Here we feel not the punishment of Adam, but the season's difference, as the icy fang and churlish chiding of the winter's wind which when it blows upon my body even till I shrink with cold, I smile and say, this is no flattery. These are counselors who feelingly persuade me who I am. Sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad, ugly, venomous, wears a gem around his neck. And this our life, outside from those in, finds its tongues in trees. Books in running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. Yeah, man, yeah. you're so right, dude. <laughs> I wouldn't change it. Well done, Duke Senior, to court your misfortune, then translate it into such gracefully sweet existence. Come on, let's go kill some deer, all of us. Uh, I know it hurts how these sweet-spotted fools, being nomadic and native to this natural city, should, in their own homes with horned heads, have their round haunches speared. Indeed, my lord. Melancholy Jaquies mourns it, too, and uh. swears your dear killing banishes and usurps more than your banishing brother ever did. What did Jaquies say? Did he lecture you on the finer points? A thousand times. <laughs> example after example. Amazing. His thought blades pierce through the body of the country, city, court, yes, and this our life here, swearing we are nothing if not usurpers and tyrants to frighten and kill animals in their own homes. And did you leave him in this mood? Yep, we uh. did crying and lecturing about the sobbing deer. Take me to him. I love to buck him when he's like this. These fits make him full of weighted words. I'll take you to him now. <laughs> This is Sally Kate Holmes, Managing Director of Next Chapter Podcasts, here to tell you about a pretty cool new offering from our friends at Apollo Podcasts. You can now find the play on podcasts on Apollo Plus, a creator-owned platform where every subscriber helps audio fiction creators such as us. You can listen ad-free, early access to exclusives, behind-the-scenes supercuts, and more on Apollo Plus. On top of all that, 70% of the revenue on Apollo Plus goes directly to creators. Join Apollo Plus through the Apollo Podcasts app or by going to apollopods.com. Seeking the truth never gets old. Introducing June's Journey, the free-to-play mobile game that will immerse you in a thrilling murder mystery. Join June Parker as she uncovers hidden objects and clues to solve her sister's death in a beautifully illustrated world set in the Roaring Twenties. With new chapters added every week, the excitement never ends. Download June's Journey now on your Android or iOS device, or play on PC through Facebook games. Is it possible that nobody saw them? Not possible. Some traitor of the court aided, abetted, and connived in this. I did not hear of anyone that saw her. Ah! Uh, those women who attend her daily saw her in bed, and yet early the bed was empty of her treasured person. <coughs> Good, sir. Yeah. The asset clown who frequently you find funny is missing as well. Ah. 
Hesperia, Cecilia's assistant, says as she privately overheard your daughter and Rosalind praise the attributes of that wrestler Supposedly. who rendered muscle-bound Charles mute. And she thinks that wherever they are, that guy is definitely nearby. Call his brother and bring the wrestler to me. Yes, sir. If he's gone, bring Oliver then. I'll make him find him. Mm-hmm. Brilliant idea. Do it bro. now. Now. Now! All right. Okay, so. Do not now pause or stop the search until the fools who run are back with me. No problem. Come on, you idiot. Oh, thank, you. thank you for throwing me under the horse. Me? You and your new suit. Wait. You look like a chump. Who's there? <gasps> what? Is it my young man? My gentle young man. Oh, sweet, sweet boy, whose face memorializes your old dear father. What are you doing here? Why are you virtuous? Why do people love you? And how come so gentle, strong, and valiant? And why, ever why, would you beat the day out of the rash duke's most prized wrestler? The greatness of you has greatly beat you here. Do you know, sweet boy, that some men's generous hearts prompt others to destroy? Such for your heart-beating warmth. Your virtues are sworn traitors and villains to yourself. Oh, what a world! That my sweet boy's sweetness should poison him as he sweetens. Why? What's the matter? Oh, unlucky boy, do not dare stay within this door. Under this roof, the enemy to your honey heart lives. Your brother, no, no brother, but the son, not even son, I won't call him that, of the man I was about to call father, has heard your praises too, and tonight he will burn your home where you rest with you in it. If he fails to do so, he will find another way to rack that rest. I overheard him and his plotting plans. Do not stay. This house is butchery. Be feared. Away. Do not go in. Where would you have me go, Adam? Anywhere, Orlando, but here, not here. Really? You want me homeless? To beg food or, like a butcher, cut and carve my way to a thievish living on the road? Mm. I must do this, must I? I must. I shall. No, do not. I have 500 with me here. These bills I saved with care under your father to use in the days of my after-work life when legs and limbs rendered me unable and shoved aside aid sent me from common sight. Take it, and God, who looks after the sparrow, will care me now. Here, here, it's yours, it's for you. Let me be your advice, man. Yes, I'm old, Orlando, but strong and lusty. Oh, good old man, oh. you are the model, the work ethic example to remind my day that work had honor and not just pay. Hmm. You are not a man of this current time, Adam. As one who climbs up, promotion bound, and once achieved, they stop ascent as soon as they get it. <laughs> not so with you. But poor old man, you climb a broken ladder, rungless and tethered to the earth despite oh. your fight and desire to ascend. Come with me, and together we shall go. And before we spend your hard-earned store, we will find our way to earn some more. Oh, uh, young boss, go on, go now. I am with you to my last gasp. I follow with truth and loyalty. From 17 years to 80 now, or more, I lived here. Here are my roots. Now no more. When seventeen, all fortune I did seek, but at eighty-something now, too late a week. But fortune fate could not pay me better than to die well, and not to you a debtor. How oh merry, my weary, my spirits. Oh, your spirits? Uh, legs. Oh, my legs. Who cares about the others? 
I would moan as myself a woman, but am barred by this other woman here and must comfort her as my pants and coat must protect. Uh, project courageously for the sake of the petticoat. Therefore, have courage, good Emma Grant. Ooh. Please, bear with me. Oh, I cannot bear another step. Oh, God. Oh. Ooh. Oh, you good, little mama? Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I'll be, yeah. Hang in there, you need an orange slice or anything? Or? Yeah, I'd take an orange slice. Yeah, yeah. probably good. All right, all right. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I'd rather bear with yeah. you than bear you. Is it for real? Oh, is there an orange well, slice? Well, this is the forest of Arden. Yep. <clears throat> now I'm in Arden. Ass hat me. You know, when I was home, I was in a better place. But... Why complain when I could be content, hmm? Exactly. So be so, good Touchstone. <gasps> Look who comes here. A young man with old. In solemn, serious talk. Oh, Corin, do you know how hard I love her? I can guess, yes. This heart is loved before. No, Corin, you can't, okay? You're old. But when young, you were a true lover, yes, as such that sighed all day and night with drool. Oh. But if your love was anything like mine, because it couldn't be, nope, <laughs> nope, never. How stupid, stupid crazy were the ways in which you acted on that dreamy love? A thousand ways. So many are forgotten. Well, then you've never loved like me. Oh, if you've forgotten the faintest folly that every love inspired you to, you haven't loved like me. Yeah. Or if you have not sat like this, tiring one with tale of your love's virtue, you have not loved like me. Or if you have not run from one as my heavy lifting heart now makes me, you have not loved. Oh, Phoebe, 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 whoa, whoa. Phoebe. Poor shepherd, hearing your heaving heart has here hurt. How it reminds me of my own. Oh, and mine. I remember when I was in love, I beat a stone with a take that for eyeing my girl Jane all day. And I remember kissing her, her, her washing stick oh. and kissing the, the udders that her sweet chapped hands milked. And oh. I remember flirting with a pea pod plant as practice. And I remember taking two of those little pea pods and begging her to wear one of them what? for me. What? We're all true lovers. We all do strange stuff for love. <laughs> mortal. Mortal in life. Mortal in love. <laughs> you speak more wisely than you know. Uh, nope. I'll never be aware of my wisdom till I break a shin on it. Oh, God. God. This farmer's passion is as my own in just this fashion. Yup, and mine, which I can't remember. No. <sighs> I beg you, one of you, ask that man there if, for money, he will feed us some food. I'm fainting to my death. Mm. Uh, hello. Uh, hi there, Mr. Hippie. Just quiet, um, clown. He's not your kid brother. Who called? Uh, you're better, sir. I hope, or else very wretched. Enough, clown. <clears throat> Good evening, friend. Good evening to you, gentle sir, and to all. Uh, tell me, farmer, if love or money can buy food or lodging here or near, take us where we might rest ourselves with both? This young woman here is torched and totaled and faints with hunger. Mm -hmm. oh. well, young man, my heart for her. I wish for her sake, really, not mine, that my lot in life would allow for relief. But I am footed to another man and do not shear the sheep that are not mine. My boss of sort is Marxist in state what? and does not hope to house in heaven by helping others hospitably. Oh. Oh, no. <clears throat> furthermore, his farm and all that's on it are all for sale and at his homestead now. Because he's not there, there's nothing for you to eat. No, no. <laughs> but what we have, come see. I'll advocate and welcome you will be. Oh. Uh. Please, uh, sweet man, if you can with 
integrity, you buy the whole shebang and surround for us, and we will pay you for it. And give you a raise to boot. What? I like this place, and willingly could waste my time in it. <laughs> uh. Oh, yeah, well, 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 the place is certain to be sold, that's sure. Yeah. Come with me. Uh. If you like the parcel you see, the gain that is to be, and the life you might, I will serve. <laughs> Nourish that you hope to be, and buy it with your gold. And now, suddenly... The Play On podcast series, As You Like It, was written by William Shakespeare and translated into modern English verse by David Ivers. All episodes were directed by Kim Martin Cotton. Radio play by Catherine Eden. The cast is as follows. Megan Kreidler as Rosalind. Julian Sehe as Orlando. Adeline Phelps as Celia. James Udom as Oliver and Sir Oliver Martex. Franchelle Stewart Dorn as Duke Senior. David Ivers as Jaquies, Andy Grotlucian as Touchstone, Larry Bull as Duke Frederick and Adam, Kaylee Carter as Phoebe, Noah Kayeshian as Sylvius, Anna Sunberg as Audrey and LeBeau, Matt McNally as Amiens and Jake's Dubois, Jane Louie as Hyman, Scott Cordes as Corin, H. Adam Harris as Charles the Wrestler and William. Casting by the Telsey office, Karen Castle, CSA. Voice and text coach, Julie Foe. Original music composition, mix, and sound design by Lindsay Jones. Music direction and vocals by Jane Lou. Additional vocals by Matt McNally. Sound engineering and mixing by Sadaharu Yagi. Mix engineering and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Coordinating producer, Transcend Streaming, Kira Bowie and Liana Keys. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The Play On Podcast series, As You Like It, is produced by Next Chapter Podcast and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit nextchapterpodcast.com for more about the Play On Podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. Subscribe to Play On Premium on Apollo Plus for ad-free episodes and join our Patreon for exclusive merchandise and new commercial-free releases. Go to playonpodcast.com for our bonus content, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, all the world's a stage. Join Play On Premium to get merch like t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee mugs, ad-free episodes, and bonus content video featuring interviews with the actors, producers, playwrights, and directors who brought it all to life. Go to ncpodcasts.com and subscribe to Play On Premium to support the art and the artists. Next Chapter Podcasts.